Hey everyone, I'm Epicure Executive Director Dana Kale, and we're going to talk about algorithm today. So here's the deal. The algorithm changes constantly, and I'm not an algorithm expert, but I can tell you the basics that I do know. So bottom line, once you um, know the algorithm, it's probably going to change, but there are a few key things that say it's the same. Facebook really wants to encourage authentic, original content. They want to they want to foster connections. They're not really about being salesy, right? So a salesy post does not get high precedence in the algorithm. Uh, when you're in a group, anything that is, if I have a, a class group, for example, when my host comments on a post, the group members are way more likely to see it because she's commented, the algorithm is more likely to put it in her friend's feed because a friend commented, okay? So it's super important that your host comment on every post. Um, when I post in my customer group, the more people that comment on that post, the faster it boosts the algorithm. So the most recent thing that I've heard for the algorithm is six comments of six words or more in the first 33 minutes. Now, bottom line is anything that you post, if it is not um, interacted with right away, Facebook determines that it's not good comment or not good content, okay? That's the bottom line. So when you post something because you're awake and you're feeding the baby or whatever at 1030 at night, by the time most people are going to see that post in the, in the morning, Facebook's already pulled that from news feeds. It doesn't even put it in everybody's news feed. Let's be really clear on that. If you've got a customer group of, say, 200 people, you are not going to get any posts that you put in front of all 200 people. Maybe 20%, maybe, are going to have that post come through their newsfeed. If nobody in those first people that see it comments or interacts with it, Facebook is like, ooh, this post is kind of boring and sucks. We're going to stop showing it to people. So you really want to have engaging content. Engaging content is way better than a ton of content, all right? So engaging content, um, ask questions, get people to engage with you. Um, ask, like I ask a lot of, what are you making for dinner? Drop me a photo and what's the fancy name you've called it? Or, you know, something fun like that because I want images um, in my comments, but I also want people to have real conversation. I'm really not the person that puts the game up and whoever guesses the number of beans in the cruet. That sort of thing actually makes me kind of crazy. So if that's your thing, awesome. It's just not mine. And that's the thing, right? Everybody's Facebook is different because we all have different personalities. Think about this. How many groups are you in? And do you see every post sliding past your newsfeed? No. You're probably in groups where you see zero posts coming past your newsfeed, right? If you haven't interacted in that group in a while, you're not going to see any posts. So any customers that haven't interacted in your group are not going to see the posts. It's not even going to hit their newsfeed. So that's why you really want to have engagement. When you post something that you think a specific customer is going to love, I tag them in the comments. And, oh my gosh, Cindy, I know you just got the lemon curd. You're going to love this. Here you go. And engage Cindy into the post so that she's now seeing what's in your group. You really want to have that interaction. You want to post at the right time of day, right? So you want to post when everybody's online. So depending on where you are and who you know, that's going to be different. But as a general rule of thumb, I find that, you know, around just before supper, if people are getting off of work, they're probably at work and they're probably bored and they're scrolling their phone. Uh, sometimes when they're just getting out, and often 8.30 at night, people are done putting the kids to bed and they're just hanging out on their phone. For me, those times work really well. Um, for different platforms, the times are going to be different. Right? And for your friend group or your circle or your customer group, it might be different. You're just going to need to play with things and see what gets the best interaction. So let's talk public versus private. Now, when you're wanting to have a group for your customers, like a VIP group or whatever you're going to call it, um, that I recommend a private group because in a private group, you can do special offers, right? So I can say, hey, everybody who posts a photo of their dinner this month is going in a draw. I can't wait to give away a meal solution to, you know, three of you or whatever. I can't say that on my business page. I can't say that on my timeline. I can say it in my own private group with my own customers. 
I can't go say that in a private group that is, say, my community group. That community group is not solely my customers and a group designed to buy me. It's a private group, but that's a whole different thing. Even your timeline, if it's locked down to friends only, is not considered private. So in a PM, in a group where people can't get access unless you're customers, that is a private group. That's where you can make a special offer. A business page is 100% always public. There is no other option with a business page because it's a business page. It has to be public. So if you've got a business page, great. Do not make any special offers on it. So let's talk about the difference of pages, groups, and events. <clears throat> a page is a business page, typically. That's, that's how they're referred to. They are always public. Um, and the business page is really about being having a public place to be found. Um, you know, if you're at a higher level in Epicure, you likely have one. I don't recommend my new consultants make a business page. They don't need one. Most of the people that are going to be connecting with them are in their customer group. 90% of my business with my customers, probably 95 comes out of my customer group. My business page gives me a place to share things that my consultants can share. Basically, that's what my business page is for. So um, events now, groups are super cool for classes. I highly recommend you use a group for a class rather than an event. The main reason being that you can schedule. You can use Facebook scheduler or you can use a scheduling app, but you can schedule your posts in advance so you're not constantly going into the group, finding some content and doing it. You can sit down once a week if you want, flip through your phone and look at the photos that you've cooked and throw them up in your group. Or often what I do is I finish cooking dinner, I grab my photo, I put it in my group at 9.30 at night or 10.30 at night when I think about sharing the photo. Well, I'm not going to share it at 10.30 at night. Nobody's going to see it. I'm going to schedule that for a busier time the next day and have it ready to go in my group. Now, events are great. Um, the nice thing about events is that the content stays in order. So if you're doing an event, the content will stay within the order that you place it in, whereas in a group, when somebody comments on the content, it will jump to the top of the group. But you cannot schedule in an event. So that's a downfall with an event is there's no scheduling. Um, and the most sort of vibrant content that you might want to jump to the top won't. So that's the main key difference between those three features on Facebook. The desktop version is just this little plus right here. It's the create. So we're just going to hit that and we're going to choose to create a group. Okay, and I'm going to choose the privacy. Now public versus private. Uh, public groups are fine. You can totally have a public group, but you cannot make any special offers in a public group. So if you're looking to make a group that's going to have draws and giveaways, that has to be a private group. And in my uh, case, I'm just going to make a group where I can use it for all of my class posts. So here's the cool thing. You can, I'm not going to invite friends now. Not yet, because I want to get content in my group first, okay? So skip the inviting friends. Uh, so now we are, of course, wanting to put a photo in there, but this is the basics. All you do is hit create group. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is you want to have a cover photo on your group, right? So you're just going to hit edit, and then you're going to choose. You can't choose from your photos. You don't have any in there yet. I would upload a photo. Now, I'm going to show you the desktop version. I have Epicure's social images shared in a Google Drive, so that's where I'm going to upload them from. So I'm just going to go into here to cover images. You could just go to Epicure's website, but here's the cover images, and this drive is shared. Um, so this is a public drive that you're welcome to access. So let's just say we're going to pick this one. I'm going to make a summer group. You know what? No, I'm going to pick this Lannis Wraps for the current season. So I'm going to add my cover photo. And it tells you to invite members before your cover photo. Ignore that. Then I would add my description, right? So if it's a sample class, for example, where I'm just putting all my posts to do a class, I'm not going to add a description. But if I'm making a VIP group or a class group, I'm actually going to put some content in there before I invite any customers in. All right? So now here's the group link at the top. When you're on a desktop, it's just this web link right at the top. 
That link is super important. That link is gold. Now, here's the deal. Facebook messages, uh, when you're messaging somebody to a group, you need to include that link. I tell all of my hosts, and even when I am inviting customers into my VIP group, it's super important to send a PM and to include the link. Here's a quick story. So one of my consultants was ill. She couldn't do her class, and she messaged me on Monday saying, hey, can you do my class on Thursday? I'm like, yeah, yeah, no problem. I got it. I'll cover your class. So Thursday, about a half an hour before her class, I was like, oh, I saw the group invite a few days ago. I'll go jump in that group now and get ready. Even knowing the name of the group, even having been invited to the group, I could not find the group. She and I were going crazy. I'm messaging her going, oh my gosh, I know, I'm sorry you're sick, but I can't find your group. She was sending me screenshots and I was typing the exact correct name in the search and it would not come up. As soon as she sent me the link, boom, I could click on the link and I was instantly in the group. So sometimes the search does not work. You really want everybody to get the link because once it disappears off of their notifications, that invitation, they won't have it. And of course, it's kind of spammy to invite a whole bunch of people in the group and not follow up with them. You want to say, oh my gosh, you know what? I'm so excited. I've got this Epicure group for blah, blah, blah. I'd love to have you come in because I think you'd love it because whatever that looks like for you, but you need to personalize it. I get invited to groups all the time. Do you know how many I join? Very few. When I get a personal message from somebody that invites me into the group and tells me how come that group's for me, I'm down. I'm in the group. So make sure you're being personal with people. All right. So let's talk about a crazy part of being the owner of a group. We've just created a group. Um, look what happens. Let's go into your manage notifications. You're going to be set to highlights only. Even as the group owner, you're not going to be automatically notified of every post. There can be multiple posts in that group that you won't even know of, and that's happened to me. So make sure you go in and you make sure you're checking your notification settings. Um, it's the three dots. Again, if you're going to go into any group, you're just going to find it like this. And make sure in the groups that you really want to keep on top of that even as a nod of the manager of the group, just as an attendee, that you have your notifications set the way that you want them. Let's talk about these three dots. These are on both of your um, different posts, whether you're on mobile or desktop. Here, I can turn on notifications. So if I want to know when somebody comments on this post, maybe I wouldn't want to do this one because it's going to have hundreds of comments, but I can easily do that, okay? So I can turn on notifications. I don't need to say following in order to get notifications. I can just turn it on. Um, so here I want to watch Amelia again. I can save my video. That's going to show my saved items. And if I want to share this to like say my team group, I can copy that link, pop it into my team group, and then um, I can say to my team, like, hey, if you can't see this video of Amelia, it's because you're not in the Epicure Consultants group yet. Make sure you join. And then, of course, in the, if they're in the Epicure Consultants group, they're going to see the video. Now, the reason that happens is because this is a private group, right? The only people that can see what's in this or see this video, if I share it, is the members. If I thought this was a great video and I wanted to put it public on my timeline, the only people that could see it would be the members of this group because of how the settings are on the post and the group, right? It's a private group. I shouldn't be able to put it on my timeline and have everybody see it because that was defeat the purpose of a private group. Now, another feature you'll see here is report post. So if you see something, a post has gone off the rails, um, like in one of your groups, like it happens in one of my gardening groups all the time that a post goes off the rails where somebody posts spam, you just hit report post and you can um, alert the admin rather than having to figure out who the admin is. You just send that, all of the admin will be notified that there's a post they need to take a look at. So here's another cool feature of groups. If I wanted to see everything that Amelia Warren had posted in this group, I can do this. You, It looks like you might think I'm on Amelia's page. I'm not. I'm still in the group posts. 
So what this does is that allows me to see in a quick review everything that Amelia has posted in the group. So if you like somebody's content, content and you want to see, oh my gosh, I want to see everything that this person has shared into this group, boom, here's how you're going to do that. Super easy. Okay, let's talk about copying posts. So this is a sample class where I have all the posts. It's not just used by me, so I don't have my web link in here. Uh, but basically what I would do desktop version is just a left click, scroll up and grab all my text. Then I'm going to right click and copy. And then I'm just having over, I've got two Facebook screens open. I'm just having over to the second one and I'm just going to click in there. I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit paste. And I could do the same thing for my photographs. So I'm just going to tap back into my other one. I'm going to come down onto my image. I'm going to right click, copy, and then I'm going to go and pop. I can hit anywhere in this post and hit paste and the image will just pop down below. You see how easy that is? Now, I actually find this significantly faster on my mobile, but it's totally doable on desktop as well. So I'm basically just duplicating this entire post. Now, there are scheduling apps that do this. Um, if you do a lot of classes, you're probably going to want to get the scheduling app uh, because that is super handy. If you're just doing this occasionally, this actually doesn't take too long. And again, it's much faster by mobile. Now you can see I used a big wide picture on the top and then two square ones because it lays out beautifully that way. So sometimes you might just need to play with your layout. You can edit all, uh, right? If you don't like your layout, you can grab this one and say like, I want that one on the top. And then you can review it and go, oh, well that didn't work. But anyway, you get the idea. It didn't end up moving. Okay, so now you've got your post done. Um, of course, if you're taking from a draft, you're going to put your own website, you're going to put your host's name. I left a blank a line there, so it reminds me to do it. And let's schedule this. This is what I love about groups. So all we're going to do is hit schedule post, and then we can look at pick the date, right? So this is going to go up here on this date and this time. Now, in this case, I won't schedule this particular post because this would be my pinned post. So let's post this in here. And then let me show you what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to make it an announcement. I have another announcement there. Um, just ignore that. Okay, so here I've got a post in my group. And what I'm going to do before I invite my host, before anything happens for Wendy's class, I am going to pin this post. I'm going to mark it as an announcement. Okay, so basically what that does is it sort of pins it to the top of your group. Um, it used to be called pin a post, so some of us still use that old language. So now when people come to the group, what they're going to see is they're going to see that post right away. When they're new to the group, they're going to learn about Epicure, and then they can engage in what's happening. Let's talk about organizing your groups. Now, on the desktop, this is the group's feed. It's the little thing that looks like a paw print. That's what I thought it was for the longest time. Now let's talk about organizing this. You can choose, you can see here, I have a little safety pin or a little push pin. I have groups pinned to the top. Okay, so let's just go into our settings. In your group, you can decide which ones are pinned. Okay, so what I can do here is this week, I don't have any live cooking classes. So I mean live online. When I have cooking classes, I pin my cooking class groups to the top of my pinned groups so I can easily get to them super fast. When I don't have live cooking classes, so I do my classes every second week, my groups that are sitting at the top are going to be my regular groups that I spend the most time in. So I love this feature. So you can change around your groups, you can change your notifications, you can change what you get notified. There's all sorts of fun things you can do to make your group feed so much more effective. And if you haven't been watching these, look, Suki's talking about how amazing it is to come to conference. And here we are at the conference. So I love this. Suki was so excited about sharing her best memory. And I cannot wait to hear all of your amazing memories sitting here at conference right now. Let's talk about types of content. 
I really want you to think about basically we ate food. I mean, that's really the main content that I'm sharing is what I'm cooking, either in a live or what we ate. Because bottom line, that's what everybody needs to enjoy their Epicure mortars. They want to know how to use it. Um, and I know there's a recipe on the jar. I get that. It's not enough. Seeing you cooking your food, seeing extra ideas, just seeing your customers, um, the other customers cooking their food is huge. Okay. Uh, so we want to be thinking helpful, informative. We want to be thinking 80-20. I am probably about 90-10 probably 90% uh, we ate food, here's a cool recipe, doesn't this look yummy, oh my gosh, and 10% hosting business sales, right? People want to shop, but they don't want to be sold to, right? So um, you've got some gorgeous content. Let's talk about where to find some of that. Let's get my screen on and I'll show you some examples. First and foremost, your photos. Take photos of everything you cook. I'll give you some hints in a second for editing them, but bottom line, you're eating three times a day, so are your customers. Encouraging them to use their product is when they need to join the business because they love it so much, when they choose to host, and when they choose to reorder. So the more that they are using their products, the more that those things happen. Now, there's tons of beautiful images out there. There's fancy images. I really don't feel you need to make some. A lot of my posts are really what I made for dinner. So if you want to make fancy images, fill your boots. Don't feel that you need to because the food that you cook for dinner and that your customers cook for dinner is what gets me a huge part of my reorders and my engagement. So take your photos. Now, I have a funny story to tell you. My kids know they have been trained since youngsters that we have to take the photos before we eat. So when they have friends come over for dinner, you know, back when that was a thing and that happened, people would come for dinner and they would be like, no, 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 you can't help yourself yet. My mom needs to take her photos. So even now when like my adult friends come for dinner, they're like, hey, have you photographed that yet? I can't wait until that happens again. But you know what? That's bottom line. That is part of my business. I'm in a food business. I have to take photos of my food and share them. And your customers want to see those in your VIP group. I promise you. Now, I also want to tell you a little story about people that are lurking in your groups. There's a lot of times you have no idea. So I was in Home Depot. I had a mask on. It was not an Epicure mask. I had a hat down, down high, like deep over my head. I figured I was like really nicely obscured. So I have somebody come up to me at Home Depot. Hey, Dana. And they start talking about my group. I love your photos. I love all the stuff that you share. It's so awesome. And I'm like, I don't have a clue who you are. And I really didn't. Her mask hid boat and her hat hid her face and somehow managed to disguise her, even though I wasn't disguised. So we had a great little chat. And then thankfully later that evening, she sent me a Facebook message telling me how great it was to see her. And I was like, oh, of course that's who that is. And though she's never commented, she has never thrown a like or a heart on anything. And she went out of her way to tell me how much she enjoys it. So just know that a lot of times uh, you know, as much as that sort of messes with my algorithm when she doesn't um, interact, they are appreciating what you put in there. And that inspires her to open her cupboard and make something with her Epicure. How amazing is that? So I want to show you something. I want to show you something super cool. When you do a live inside a group, you can add a photo to it. So this live was not well enough lit, as you can see by my plate, but I was basically eating it and freaking out about how good it was and wondering why I waited so long. Um, so when I was done my quick little live, you can see it's like 37 seconds long, I then edited the post and added the completed photo so they can see both at once. And you can do that on your mobile or on your desktop. Right now, I can edit this post with my live in it and add extra photos if I want. So that's a super cool feature when you're going live in your groups.
let's talk about your food photography. Bottom line, your greens should be green, your white should be white. These two are the pretty much the same photo, it's just a slight turn of the plate, but you'll notice that on the left-hand side, the greens are more vibrant. You are not going to get the right color for your photography unless you're cooking and then taking a photo in a natural light at 4 p.m. or have a light box or whatever. Really, you can just do a very simple edit with your phone. That's what I did here. So on the photo on the uh, left, I just tap the brightness, um, the auto edit, and then increase the brightness a little bit. I basically take the photo and then I look at the photo when I look at the food and I'm like, ooh, do those look the same? No, it looks duller in my camera. So then I adjust it so that it looks like it does in real life. Because bottom line, none of us have the lighting. Your greens are gonna be dull and your whites are gonna be a little, you know, a little gray, a little beige. So get your white to be vibrant white, get your green to be a nice bright green and you'll have a beautiful photo. The other thing I do with my photos, if I'm cooking dinner, I am making sure that I'm using multiple colored things in my food, right? I'm not gonna just make a plate with all green vegetables unless there's a lot of unique texture and other things, but I can look at my food and go, oh my gosh, that's kind of boring looking. Let's just throw a little bit of, you know, parsley on there. Let's throw a little bit of diced red pepper on there. You can do little things to punch up the color. And of course, the more colors that are in your food, the more nutrition because you're eating from the rainbow. So it's a win-win for the eyeballs and for you. Content right here at your fingertips. Evergear makes us the most amazing content. It's ready for us. We don't have to do anything. Uh, now, if you're on your mobile, you're just gonna go to this page and navigate and save the images. If you're on a desktop, they're in the Google Drive. Again, the Google Drive is really not super handy for mobile. You're better off to just save them to your camera roll. Uh, so you can go in here, you can download them all in the zip, you can access the Google Drive, you can save and copy individual ones. But look at this gorgeous content. It's a great way to feature products. And again, you're gonna do a write-up, right? You're not gonna just take an image and just throw an image on your page. Please don't do that. Um, don't even just take a post and throw it on your page. You wanna have a write-up all the time. So there's some content sitting there waiting for you. There's also some information right on the product information page in your back office. So here you're going to find some some great videos. You want to talk about microwave cooking? Great, share that video. There's meal plans in here, right? That solves a problem. Attraction marketing solves a problem. So that's what the meal plans do. Gets everybody thinking, oh my gosh, I don't have to be stressed out about dinner. There's some great product info cards that shares about product. You can grab information off the product profile sheets, okay? Go to your website. Now, I highly recommend you go to your website rather than just epicure.com because then you're when you're sharing a link, you're sharing people a link that's going to take them right to your website. So let's say, for example, this recipe, I can right click, copy the image, then I could pop over to Facebook, paste the image. I can also go up here and right click, sorry, yeah, right click and copy the link and then share the link. And that's a great way to share ideas. Look at this great recipe. Who's got the ranch? You're gonna love this, right? Maybe tag a few customers that have the ranch dressing, or sorry, the ranch dip mix, and show them, hey, look at this saucy deliciousness here, right? So really try to make sure you're putting some text every time you share a post. I promise you, you're probably not meaning to be lazy or to give the impression you're being lazy. But when there's a post that's shared with no little write-up like, oh my gosh, doesn't this look delicious? You guys check it out. Or, oh, who loves the enchilada? Here's a cool new idea for the enchilada you have. That is going to have people want to watch the post, read the post. Just sharing something with sort of with nothing it gets way less interaction. And I'm sure the algorithm probably downgrades it as well. Okay, so another great source is going to be 
um, our consultants groups and there's things being shared. Follow your favorite consultants, follow their social, follow Epic Your Social. Oh my gosh, have you seen Epic Your Social? It's amazing. You could just share the post. We're gonna hop over there in a minute. Now let's talk about following other consultants or Epicure. What I see all the time is people saying, can you make that public? This little symbol right here at the, oh, I don't know how am I gonna draw it? This little symbol right here at the end of the date shows that it is in a private group and the only people that can see this is members of Epicure Consultants. Anytime it is not a public group, the items can only be shared if they were shared in from a public source. So for example, in this post, this was shared by Elisa. She shared a post. So you could, on a desktop, click on post to go directly to her post. You can click down here and it will open the post. When a post is done like this, she shared it publicly, right? You can see right here that this is public. Go to the public post and share from there. But saying, can you make this public in a private group? It can never be made public. Have you seen Epicure's amazing content? Follow their Facebook if you're not already. Only 1.3 thousand of us shared this. Come on, people were slacking on the job. More of us should have shared this amazingness, right? So look at this gorgeous content that they put together. And you can see here, they post a video and they don't just throw the video up without a description. Of course, there's a description like I talked about, right? That description makes people much more likely to click and engage. So look at their blog. Oh my gosh, look at this gorgeous information. The work is done for you. Grab something here that looks fascinating and yummy and share it in your group and rave about, you know, how it solved something in your life. Hey, it solved the, the hunger that you're feeling, right? Okay, let's talk about attraction marketing. Bottom line, it's the difference between you need this and this is why I need this, or this is the problem this has solved in my life, right? Like the meal solutions, uh, those solve the problem of putting dinner on the table really fast. The recipe plans and the meal kits and the guides all solve what's for dinner and how to do it quickly. Everything that we do in Epicure solves some sort of challenge that people are having, right? The multi-purpose pot solves the straining and the boiling over the hot handle. So when we're talking about either products or having an Epicure business, instead of saying you need the multi-pot because, oh my gosh, look how cool this is. I don't need to use an oven mitt. There's a big difference there. So when I'm talking about my business, I'm not growing post after post on my social saying, join my page, join my team, join, join, join. I'm talking about, hey, look, I get to walk to office in my, walk to the office in my slippers. Look at this amazing lifestyle that I have. Look at all these great friendships that my business has brought me. Sharing the benefits without telling them that they need it and how come is basically attraction marketing. An example would be Home Depot, where they do like the weekly classes that people can involve with, or at least they did. So then people built like a trust and a, and a belief in Home Depot. So when they needed something, they were going to go there. Pretty much that's what we do with our cooking classes, right? As we break them in and we solve the problem of what's for dinner. We solve the problem of how can I get enough money? Uh, we solve the problem of getting the products for free. We solve all those problems. So remember, it's always about how can it help them, but without beating them over the head with you need this because this is how this product has solved this in my life. We'll often copy content from others. And it's great when people ask, I figure if it's public content, it's public and I can share it or copy it. And of course, I always try to give credit. I don't put a photo up and make it sound like it's my photo. Look with this, you know, delicious item so-and-so shared, or look at this great idea. I never want to say, look what I cooked, because I haven't. That would just be straight up creepy. Um, but the other thing that you often see is screenshots where 
you know, when you're going to use somebody's photo, you just like do the thing on your phone where you hit the buttons and then you get the whole screen and you get all this extra mess. You just tap on the photo on Facebook and hit save photo. When you screenshot, it gets fuzzier and fuzzier and fuzzier every time that happens. So it might look okay on your mobile, but it's gonna look like crap on a desktop. And a lot of people are gonna be viewing on their desktop, okay? So you need to keep that in mind. So save the photo whenever possible. Now let's talk about respecting the creator. Oh, I was, you wouldn't believe. So I saw this beautiful branded content that somebody made, she had her, Branding, you know, sort of like subtle, but in the middle of the photo, it was just a website link. I later that day saw somebody had taken that person's photo, food she cooked, covered it with her own branding, covered the original branding with her own branding, copied and pasted the exact same text and put it on her own Facebook. No, 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 no. That is just not cool. So if you want to share their photo, you ask them if they didn't make it public already, and then you leave their branding there. That's not for you to cover, cut off, etc. Your customers aren't going to say, oh, look, this person's photo is prettier, so I'm going to go shop there. Your customers, when they have a relationship with you, are still going to shop with you. So just respect the creator. Um, so, the, and then when you're going to copy and paste their text, Please be inspired by somebody's text. Please don't copy paste. Now, if they've given you permission or it's a recipe or whatever, put your own little blurb at the beginning. It's part of the algorithm that if you're just doing a straight copy paste from somebody's text, it's gonna get downgraded in the algorithm and it's plagiarism. So, you know, spice it up. You might go, oh my gosh, this is like the greatest sentence ever, but then I'm gonna change this one to sound like me. Okay, please, please respect the creator. Um, and you know what, when you wanna give credit, just share their original content. If it's public, share it that way. Your customers then say, oh, look, I'm hearing, seeing an idea from somebody else. They are not, you know, feeling married to you. They're not feeling distressed when it's not on your content. And it's actually a great way to show them that we have an amazing caring and sharing community because we can see great things that other people made, recognize that those things are great and share them on ourselves. And that helps somebody who's thinking about coming in as a consultant think, oh my gosh, look, I don't have to come up with everything myself because brilliant people have made things that I can share, right? How awesome. Here we are in my VIP group. I've got one of Epicure's beautiful headers right at the top. And one of my first posts that I have pinned to the top of my group here in the announcements are the catalog slides. Now, I think our catalog is the most gorgeous thing ever. It is my main marketing material. I'm going to direct people to that firstly. And though the slides are super handy uh, for when people come into the group, they can see a list of everything. And you can see the first slide that I have here is the brand new product, right? Because I want people that are my regular customers to see that first. They have the other product or a lot of it. I want them to be able to at a glance, see what's new and there that is for them. Now, most of my content in my customer group is my customers because I have bribed them for that basically. I said to them, look, I need your help. I want to thank you for sharing your, your um, photos in my group. Look at Shelly's beautiful photo that she threw in there. Clearly, she's a gardener with those awesome carrots. Uh, did you know carrots were originally not orange? They were purple. Fun fact. So I tell my customers, hey, I'm going to, I brought pretty much, I actually said, I'm going to bribe you to share your photos. I'm going to thank you for that because you're inspiring me and in giving me new ideas of what to cook for dinner. And, you know, I have a hundred seasonings. I can still get bored. So when I see you make something, then I think, oh, I need to open my whatever. They love it. So I just do draws for meal solutions because I can mail them for under $2 in Canada. And I do a couple of draws a month and give away a meal solution. Okay, so 
Now most of my content is my customers. So here's a fun little post. So on the uh, 25th, when Tria has her birthday, I'm going to send her a little birthday message and I'm going to make sure I include like a waffle image, maybe not Epicure's waffles, but in general, like happy waffle days, but I'll send her when she has her birthday, right? I can use these to schedule posts. So coming up on National Poultry Day, guess what I'm going to feature in my group and talk about National Poultry Day, right? So it's just a fun little interesting um, image. I've got, you know, things that are sort of funny in here because everybody loves a good foodie laugh. Uh, there's Wendy sharing a post. Like pretty much every second post is me. Now, here's where I drop the ball, okay? You always want to reply to your comments. That's an imperative for the algorithm. That's imperative for connection. I was having a day. Frankly, I should have had my happy light on more. I was about four days into the doldrums, hadn't cooked, couldn't get out of my own way. I did this post and now, you know, I'm in a better space. I need to pop in here and I need to reply to every one of these comments and thank them and love on these customers. So, you know, even if you didn't love on them at the time, go back and love on them now. So that's a super important thing to reply to all of your comments, to love and, well, not just like, but ideally love everything they post. Okay, so here's somebody wanting to know when the catalog's out. She's open up for Tuscan and people are jumping on going, yeah, we need the Tuscan bag, right? I love that sort of action. Here's one of Epicure's beautiful posts. What did I do? I shared it with a little blurb, right? So talk about using one product for many things. That solves a problem. Uh, so there's somebody chiming in with how she did it, right? So I love this. It's all about giving ideas. Here's another funny one, telling them, you know, how to use their passport. I did one here talking about uh, the difference in my business. Now look at the time on that. Most of the things I post are late afternoon and evening, and they get better traction. This one, I was so excited. Monday morning, I posted it right away, but I should have waited until I had more traffic at my group because I know it's not usually at 11 a.m. Okay. A personal profile. I choose to have mine public. Uh, basically, I figure if I'm not willing to say it publicly, I probably shouldn't say it at all. So that's pretty much my philosophy. Um, although I don't have young kids, right? So I'm not putting photos of them up. So, of course, there's so many reasons why people will have public or private. Um, so anything you ever see on my page, it's public. You're welcome to share it. Now, one of the things you want to do is not be, uh, you know, selling on your personal timeline. It's not designed for that. It's designed for attraction marketing, for sharing, right? You can find, feel free to cook a meal on there if you like. And though salesy posts, that's not the place for it. So you, though, do have links available. If you edit it here, you can edit everything at once, right? So I can talk about where I work. I can talk about where I went to school. I've got my websites. So I've got my Facebook group. Um, I've got my Pinterest. I've got my social links. Put all your stuff in here. It's super important that people, when they see you having posted something somewhere and they're curious, they're going to come here and check you out. So there's also a thing called a featured image. See that right here? Now, if you go look at your Facebook after this, you're going to see that you probably have nine little photos there that Facebook chose to put there for you. You can choose to put nine little photos there of your own, or you can do what I've done is I just made a quick little Canva image. Um, you could even just take one of Epicure's beautiful social squares and, and add some writing to it as long as you're not blocking the image. But what I've done here is I put a featured image. So, and when they click the featured image, look what happens. So I'm all about gardening and I'm all about Epicure. So let's, let's expand my screen. So when they click the featured image, they're going to get the links to join me in my gardening group. They're going to get the links to join me at my business page. So Right, people can find out all about me and figure out how to connect with me quickly and easily by what I have shared on my personal page. So editing your featured image, 
it's going to automatically show you your public photos because your featured image is public. If your Facebook timeline is really locked down hard to only family and friends and you don't have anything in public photos except your profile, you're not really going to have anything showing here. So you can feature something. Uh, so you can scroll down and, you know, pick out of your photos. In this case, I uploaded a photo. And what happens is that photo will show in your newsfeed. It'll show down here a few days ago when I did that. And I can't find it now. But anyway, it showed up in my newsfeed. And I did the same thing that you do is I just edited the post, right? You're just going to click on the three buttons. That's when I edited the post and I added the links. Because, of course, as you're uploading it here as a featured image, it won't have the links. You will have to go back to it later and add them. You can make a spelling mistake or whatever. And, gosh, you know what? Get Grammarly. If you feel struggling with, like, spelling and, and grammar, there's a free app that you can put on that will check your spelling for you. So it's awesome. I use that all the time. Okay, now let's look at searching your profile. Did you know this is a thing? So let's go on here and let's say, I want to see every time I talked about Epicure. Now that would not, actually that's going to be an overwhelming search. Let's say I want to talk about, every time I talked about my slab that I'm putting for my countertop, I'm going to type slab and everywhere that I talked about the word slab all the way back to 2020, look at that. Okay, here, 2016, I talked about a slab. Anyway, I have found everything in every group. You notice, not just on my personal page, everywhere that I said the word slab, I'm going to find that post. Did you know that you could do that on your Facebook? Isn't that amazing? Did you know you could clean your messages? This was life-changing for me. I didn't normally look at messages from this screen. Um, I didn't usually come here. So uh, how I got here is I just go to my up to my top and I just type messages and then I find it. I don't actually have the messenger app installed on my computer. So it's just how my messages show up when I come to the screen. So here's the super cool thing. You can go over and hover on the three dots and hide the conversation. What? Look at that. Boom. Off it goes. I'm done with that conversation. I don't need to reply. Well, I do, but I'll have to go find it after. So when I'm done with the conversation, I then just hide the conversation, right? Let's do that again. Oh my gosh, I love it. Boom. Now, when I want to talk to that person and I search their name in Messenger or I start a new message, they're going to come right back up. But this is the best way that I know to not um, like lose track of any messages, to know if I need to do make an action on them. Once they've been actioned, whoop, out they go. And then the only things left in my inbox are things that I need to action in some way. How completely awesome is that? So last three things that are super important, if this is all you take away from this, make sure that you're inviting, posting something on Facebook or doing a mass invite to sort of everybody you know, that's really more of announcing, whereas a PM is more inviting. Think about it, right? Which one are you more likely to respond to when a friend invites you for dinner? If she just has like a blanket announcement that she invited 60 people or when she sends you a PM going, oh my gosh, I'm having a, you know, a dinner party and I'd love for you to come. So which one feels better? And then think about sharing versus tweeting. I've seen people post things like, oh, somebody please book a party with me. That sounds pretty desperate. And while you might be desperate, that's not how you're going to book a class or a party, right? So sharing what's in it for them rather than book a party with you or for you is a big difference, right? So it's really just about what you're thinking about. You want to be making sure that when you're offering anything that you are focused on what's in it for them as much as you get a benefit as well. When you're thinking about your benefit, that comes across to them and they are less likely to be inclined to jump in. That's it, folks. 
that's the end of my Facebook recording. And I just want to finish up with a quick story. Uh, let's just again talk about your personal profile and what Facebook wants to see happen there. Those are not designed for, for doing sales on. Um, I do know people that were big, have big teams. They had like big customer groups. It was somebody not Epicure. I know more than one person that this has happened to. And they were doing a lot of sales flyers and things on their personal profile and their Facebook got deleted. They lost everything. They were completely lost out. They lost their customer groups. They lost their team groups. So that has me fairly terrified, let me say. So I certainly do talk about my business on my profile. And though I'm not littering it with sales flyers and, you know, basically spamming people with information about my business, we're again going to do that attraction mark. Okay. I do not want you to get locked out of Facebook. Thanks everyone. And go rush those VIP groups and get the love and interaction going.